You might be asking yourself by this point, have we become overly obsessed with binary trees? Are we a little too fixated on them? And the answer would be probably, and we'll take a little bit of a diversion from them, uh, only to eventually return right back to them. So if we still have that goal of implementing search that does better than O of N, but does not incur significant other costs to insert or delete, um, we had binary search trees and we saw some ways to keep them reasonably within that goal. But there are other kinds of trees that can help us in this. We're going to take a little bit of a detour from the question of search related trees specifically and talk about B trees. Then we'll talk a little bit about two, three, four trees, which are more aimed at search. And in a later video, we'll talk about red black trees. So when we're dealing with binary trees on hard drives, you probably already know that reading from a hard drive is very expensive time-wise versus reading from memory. And a lot of the data that we'll be dealing with will be large amounts of data, like databases of years of history for a business or different student records that are too large to store all of it in memory at once. And so we have to assume that access from item to item within a tree might mean skipping around between different files on a hard drive, which can be much more expensive. We would like to minimize the number of reads that have to be done. One way to, do, or be, because even O of log N, O of log 2N can be expensive if our nodes are on a, a disk, a hard drive. So the cost to read a block is a little more than the cost to read a byte. We can read larger amounts of data and have done the traveling around to get to that location on the disk. Um, and we may as well read a larger chunk that we've navigated to on that disk rather than just look up these small pieces that our individual nodes would have been. So if our nodes held more keys and possibly had greater than two children per node, we could look up larger amounts of data at once and have possibly shallower trees to deal with too. That reduces the base of the logarithm, or rather increases the base of the logarithm and reduces the cost logarithmically there because log base 3 of n will be smaller than log base 2 of n. Remember that big O notation, we actually wash the base of the logarithm away, but in reality that base does matter some just like a constant speed up can matter some, or a speed up of the coefficient on a linear thing can matter some. The same is true here. If we can get a better M, a better base on our logarithm, great. So if we had more than two children for a particular node, if we had M children, then we would be doing things in log base M of N time, which could be better than log base two of N. So a B tree is a more is a general concept of having some order M where it is an M -ary tree. So if we have the possibility of 10 children, then we could have 10 could be our M and so on. All leaf nodes, I'm sorry, all non-leaf nodes in a B tree, except the root, have M over 2 to M children. So they're going to have at least half of the amount of children that are possible, so we're not wasting huge amounts of space, um, out to M, whatever the maximum number is possible. The root is either a leaf in that it's the only node, so if the tree only has one node, great, that's fine, the, loot, the root is the only node, or the root will have two to M children. It will be at least binary, and at most it will be m airy. So that allows our root to sort of be a location where things can grow. And for our non-root, non-leaf nodes, our non-root internal nodes, we're not wasting a ton of space. 
We're making sure that we fill up at least half of the available space for them and hopefully closer to M to keep our tree more uh, well filled. And a non-leaf node with K children has K minus one keys as well. So we're not just doing a left or right, obviously. We need to make a choice of, does this go slotted toward my first child, second child, third child, etc.? To do that, we're going to need to have K minus one keys. In other words, we will have at least one key to split up possibly two children out to uh, M minus one keys to be able to split out M children in those different directions. All leaves are aimed at the same depth. We keep them all at the same depth so that we don't have this difference in height between them. And we'll look at an example of how we can do that. So most bee trees will only store the actual data in the leaf nodes so that the leaves are all of the actual files or database records or whatever that we might look up. And we can just look up that chunk of files or database records or whatever by getting to those leaf nodes down there. This is an example of a bee tree. They will make a little more sense when we get into talking about the details of a 234 tree. So a 234 tree is a self-balancing search tree, but it's not binary. We're getting away from our obsession, at least for a moment. It's a bee tree where M is 4. So that means that the most children that any node can have is four. It does not have left and right. It has first child, second child, third child, fourth child, and that the root will have at least two children if it's going to have children at all. So we've got this situation where, similar to a binary search tree, if we ignored everything past the 10 on the root here, and the node connection right by the 10, you'll see that nodes to the left of the 10 have values lower than 10, and this node to the right of 10 has values higher than 10. But it's actually ranges 0 through 10 go on the furthest left slot over here, 10 through 20 go in this middle slot here, and then nodes past 20, node values past 20, go in this currently rightmost slot. The other one is empty because we don't have a third value to categorize with. All leaf nodes are at the same depth as that rule is for bee trees. All of our leaf nodes will always be at that same depth down there. The height will easily be O of log n. And in fact, it will be log base M if we have completely filled out the tree. It will be at least log base 2 because we said that any node will have at least two children. Um, so the internal nodes have one of three possible forms. They may be binary because they will have one value to organize with and the things to the left of that value will be things lower than that value, and the things to the right of that value will be things higher than that value. So it has one key and two possible children, just like a binary search tree. It may be, and this is called a two node, because the two refers to the number of children it has. A three node has three children. To have those three children, it needs to have two keys to be able to say that things will be less than the first key between the two keys or greater than the second key. And then there are four nodes. They have four children. They're completely filled out in terms of the three possible slots for their keys. And so we sort things that are lower all the way over to the left. Things between the first and second key go in that slot. Things between the second and third key go in the next slot over, and then things greater than all of the keys will go on the furthest right slot. So this gives us the ability to branch more, but still get that nice, quick comparison to see which direction we should go from where we are. 
Should I go with the furthest left child? Should I go with one of these middle children? And so on. To insert in a 2, 3, 4 tree, we can find where the node would go at the leaf layer in the tree. If we were asking to insert a number into a 2, 3, 4 tree, much like a binary search tree, we just search through to where it should have been. If the leaf that we find for a spot for it is a 2 node, meaning that it only had a single key, a single thing stored at that level, in that node, then we can insert the value in the node. That makes it a three node. It has no children in this case because it's a leaf. And so we're just inserting a new value that could later be used as a key to, to, to sort things in the tree. If the leaf is a three node, you insert the value in the node, making it into a four node. That's fine. You just have to figure out, should it go after the first key, before the first key, etc. You have to put it in the right order within that node so that the keys follow these ordering of lowest to highest. Great, no problem. The tricky one is when the leaf is already a four node, is already full. We cannot just make a child of that leaf node because we had the rule that leaf nodes will all be at the same level. This gives us a nicely spread out tree that doesn't, uh, doesn't have differing heights within it. So if the leaf was already full, if the leaf was a four node and I needed to insert there, then I break up the node and I rearrange it as needed. And this is not as difficult as it, as it might seem at first. So four nodes get split up on the way down from the root. And this ensures that there is room when you finally reach the location that you would be putting the leaf at. So for example, if I needed to insert a value into this tree, I wouldn't have to split the root here because it's not already full. When I get to a four node, as I'm trying to insert stuff, then I move its middle value up one level. Remember that I know all values in this spot over here must be greater than the existing keys because if you're already on the sort of the rightmost side here, the 24 will be greater than those keys. That's fine. No problem. So I can insert the middle node, I'm sorry, the middle value at one higher level. I know that space existed at that higher level because if there had been a four node at that higher level, I would have split it. So we then split the rest of the four node into two two nodes. This creates even more space down here at the bottom level. And that guarantees that we will be able to do simple leaf insertion of whatever new value. So if, for example, in this case, I had been trying to add 33 to this tree, I would have found that it needed to go in that node that had 22, 24, and 29. There wasn't space for it, so I brought the 24 up, the middle value up. Then I split the other two values to be two separate nodes, and I would see that 33 needed to go into the last node over here with 29. When you have to split the four nodes, if there was no parent node to that four node, you can simply create a two node using that middle key and, and, and place it up above the node that you were trying to split. It increases the tree height by one, but we know that the parent of any particular node as we come down therefore will never be a four node. So we'll never reach the case where we needed to lift up a middle key but find that there's not room for it because we're breaking up the four nodes on the way down. The order gets preserved by carefully maintaining the pointers. The keys and the pointers get shifted over to make room when we need to do those actions to make room. This makes a two, three, four tree a little strange as trees go because typically we think of trees as growing more leaves. We typically insert things that 
add to the bottom of the tree. But in a two, three, four tree, we're going to grow upward by creating those parent nodes when we have to split up four nodes. But insertion can be done in a single pass. There's no need to work back up the tree because as we came down, we split any four nodes we saw to make sure that we would have room. This may lead to some wasted space. Any of the empty slots inside of the tree are going to be some wasted space, but it ensures that we can keep this nice feature of all the leaves being at the same level and of being sure that we can insert things relatively quickly. Deletion in a 2, 3, 4 tree can get a little tricky. It's worth noting that one common procedure with two, three, four trees is that if we had to, um, we could just leave things in place and mark them as deleted. So if we needed to overwrite that slot later, no problem. But if there was something that we then were told to re-add to the tree, we might have it there already in a future insertion and just mark it not deleted any longer and bring it back. Um, things like database records, if something was removed from the database but then restored, we would have it there still and not have to rewrite it in that location. We just mark it as being deleted. And that means that if we need that space later, we'll overwrite that with whatever new data needs to go there. And if we didn't need the space, we have it to retrieve at a later time. Uh, this may not be viable if we're doing many deletions or insertions of differing values, but if we're seeing a lot of the same values over and over, it might be useful to do. Um, deletion itself can be very tricky, and that's part of why we might do these schemes of just marking things deleted and leaving those empty spaces, or leaving those spaces with the data sitting there but being marked empty, is um, if we have to remove a two node, for example, because the last key from that node got deleted, then we have to do rotations and or possibly fusions of different nodes to bring them together. If you think about undoing what we did in an insertion where we took a middle key and brought it up and we split the, the two keys into two separate nodes, if you imagine trying to undo that, it can get pretty tricky pretty quickly. Um, so we typically would not want to do that if we don't have to. Um, and that's why people would often mark something deleted and just leave it in the spot. Um, the operations, however, can be done in log n. Um, the rebalancing is very simple and fast compared to AVL trees where we have to rotate things around, possibly multiple rotations and things like that. Um, insertion and deletion can be done still in a single pass, going down through the tree, splitting the four nodes that we see. But the balancing is not quite as strict as AVL trees. It might require more comparisons to walk down the 234 tree to be able to make those comparisons of which of the keys you are greater than and which of the keys you are less than. And then that tells you which of the child slots you should be following down through. And two, three, four nodes can take up more than two times the memory because they may have those empty slots in them. And what we're going to look at here in the near future are some possible ways to do better than this that don't require the awkwardness of merging and rotating things if we're deleting, and that may not waste as much memory as we're looking at. So this is perhaps, maybe, justifying a little bit of our infatuation with binary trees, as we'll see later. <laughs>